Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Sunday, January 19th. It's 1116. And I have something else in my email that I need to share. And this should really, I pray, show the people who believe they don't have to repent why we have to repent. Have you ever heard the expression, out of the mouths of babes, then something will come, prophecy is spoken, whatever. Out of the mouths of babes. Now, I consider an 11-year-old boy a babe. He's most definitely a babe in Christ, but he's been being brought up right. All right, I have to share with you what he told his mother. All right, I'm going to try to read this. Um, let's see, the best I can. Let me see where she starts it. All right, people need to understand that by his grace we are saved because he chose to die for us. And that faith saves us as well because of it is belief in what he accomplished on the cross for us. A believer can be secure in knowing the moment they believe they are saved, but backsliding and spitting on God's laws willfully have consequences. It is an abuse of God's grace that we can't go on willfully sinning, expecting to keep our salvation. Well, I have to add here that I believe if you keep racking up a lot of accidental sins and don't repent, it's just as bad. Don't we all kind of accidentally don't aim to sin, but someone ticks you off and you flip them the bird. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I don't do that anymore. Okay, here lately with my illness, and I don't know why, just in the last month, I would say, I would do something uh, real frustrating, and I would I would use the word hell, and I cut that out years and years ago, or words similar, but not the real bad ones. I think I told y'all that, and I was like, Lord, why am I using? bad word now and then even in my thoughts in a conversation in my head I don't know if y'all do that but I do sometimes that a word will come out in my conversation like to somebody what I want to say to them you know anyway I think that we should just say I'm sorry Lord I didn't mean to do that it's just a relationship thing. But anyway, let's go on with this because this gets into what her 11-year-old son said or got from the Lord. All right, she says, There is a scripture that says, What do the children of light have to do with darkness? If we can be saved once and do whatever we want, then why is it in the letter to the churches of God said he would spit the lukewarm out of his mouth? And it means to vomit you out. I mean, that's a violent action of pushing you away. Okay. He also said... Repent, lest I blot your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Or, repent, or I will move your lampstand from its place. Now, I don't know about you, but I take that as something very negative. So, 
Let's remember that. I have seen some very interesting things to talk to you about. My 11-year-old son came to me yesterday and said, now listen to this, quote, Mom, I want to tell you some things, unquote. He told me he was watching one of his anime cartoons. There was a scene where there were books with people's records in it. And my son said, God started speaking to him. I asked him, how do you know the difference between God's voice and the enemy? He gave me a biblical answer. He said, God's voice is like still waters. Still waters. You hear, but it's like the wind or whispers, and it's still. He told me when the enemy speaks, the voice is different, or if they try to mimic God's voice, if they even start trying to say something concerning God, they freak out and disappear. So he must have been... They must have, tr demons must have tried to deceive this child. He is, this child is anointed. All right, let me move on. He also told me a lot of the time before God speaks. He will say, quote, God, unquote, to confirm he was speaking. So after that conversation, he proceeds to tell me what God had told him. God told my son, quote, What you just watched is the truth. I keep records of everyone's life in a book. They are called cinematic books. Unquote. Then he proceeds to show my son how he keeps records on people. He explained everyone has their own individual cinematic book. This book, he explained, is like a movie of your life. He then explained to me when someone repents of their sins, the areas of their life where they transgressed are blotted out white. So when the movie is played back of your life, there will be blank white areas. Then he explained to me, if you sin again and do not repent, all of the areas that were washed clean, blotted out white, fill back up again with your past transgression. He, he went even further. Let's see, where's the word further? Oh, come on. I think I went too far down. Let me scroll back up. Forgive me. Hang on. Okay, he even went further with this explanation. He said, The whole body of Christ are a special people because of they are God's children. But the prophets, their cinematic books are kept in a separate room apart from the rest of the body of Christ. 
he explained to me the reason why is because the prophets see the future and for this reason they have to be kept apart he then went even further by talking about the prophets and drawing a diagram he said mom you know how the prophets always have information that lines up with one another I said yeah he said when they share the same knowledge or prophecy or prophesy the same word it is basic biblical knowledge he told me there are multiple prophets because even though all the prophets share a common scriptural word shown to them by God they all have different pieces of the hidden knowledge that God wants to reveal to them and when he drew this diagram he said some prophets have for example 10% knowledge some have 2% knowledge some have 4% knowledge when he said this is when I instantly thought of the minor and major prophets he continued to say that it's like a prophet is a shard of glass or a piece now 11 year old going to use that as an he's must be very intelligent he's told his mom it's like a prophet is a shard of glass or a piece to a bigger picture some are larger than others but they all connect to form the bigger picture he told me one prophet cannot know all of the all of God's secret knowledge because our human flesh cannot handle it he then told me he 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 feels a possible rapture or outpouring of God's glory around March he told me now remember he said he feels a possible rapture or outpouring why he would put it that way anyway I'll move on you can take it to the Lord and pray about it you know if you trust it the Lord will talk to you and he will if you really want to hear from him you got to lay out your petition you may need to pray in the spirit if you can't keep asking for that and then be still and wait and see what he tells you or you, you may get the inclination to open your word just open your Bible and you might open up to a chapter that explains whatever it is you're questioning okay all right okay see where it is at 10 percent knowledge two percent uh okay okay he told me one prophet cannot know all of God's secret knowledge because our human flesh cannot handle it okay he then told me he feels a possible rapture or outpouring of God's glory around March he told me he knew some hidden knowledge that he was not to tell me or anyone until God tells him he can <sighs> wow God must be trusting him with something that's amazing uh, there is so much more to this and it may not be popular with the body of Christ but it is what it is God is speaking you can use anybody my son is showing divine supernatural wisdom he's showing divine supernatural something that's for sure understanding uh, God is also revealing my calling and I cannot deny any further my calling I am trusting God to see where he takes me 
and the wonderful things that he does through my son. People need to understand this is not something that is far-fetched or impossible. Not only is our God a God of impossible, but the times we are in allow for this kind of thing, don't you think? Of course. I, that's me adding it, of course. All right, she goes on to say, the body of Christ needs to wake up. Repentance is a must. Once saved, always saved, is a lie from the pits of hell. We cannot save ourselves by the law. Never can we do that. Our own works of righteousness are as filthy rags. But it is also by grace, through faith, the believer of the believer that we are saved she put believer in parentheses that we are saved God bless you sister and I pray you feel better soon okay so that's pretty heavy what he said um, that when you sin all the forgiveness you were given is no longer there? Well, because you know what? Jesus told us if he was talking about the Jews, talk, he's talking to the Jews. Jesus was always talking to the Jews. You have to remember that. He wasn't going outside of Israel Paul was the one that took the gospel to the world, the known world, outside of Israel and started preaching to the Gentiles. Now, eventually, Peter and some of the others did, but Jesus was talking to the Jews. So before you assume anything, because Jesus didn't say it, doesn't mean we don't have to do it. Paul was called. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Paul was called to do that. And his words are every bit as important as the rest of the Bible. Okay, so don't be all bewildered like, oh, so if I sin and all that forgiveness I got, is those sins go back in my book? Well, so what? When you repent, they all get blotted out again. And I bet a bunch of angels have that job. Or it can be just supernaturally blotted out and put back. Blotted out and put back. Do you see... The repent, the need to repent. Jesus told me in a message when I was hearing from him kind of regularly. He told me that repentance is key. Talking about things having to do with the rapture. He said repentance is key. So when you hear this. You understand why repentance is is so necessary, not to mention the fact that Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, where it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive the, those who sin against us. Or King James uses trespass, I believe. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Those are sins. You know, whether they've hurt your feelings. Or stole your car. Killed your baby. That's a hard one to forgive. I tell you, there are people out there. 
who have some really hard stuff to forgive. And other people are holding grudges for the smallest things. Well, they may not be small to them, but you see how a demon can cause a person to believe it's a huge thing. And, and it's not. Not compared to having your only son being crucified on the cross. And while they're nailing the pegs into his hands and his feet, he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How much more so are we supposed to say, Father, forgive her. She doesn't know what she's doing. You see, forgiveness is very important and repentance is key. Always repent of your sins and be quick to forgive others lest you dwell on it too long and it turns into bitterness and hatred. Okay? <coughs> I have, I could go on, but I won't. <coughs> Excuse me. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, over my computer, and over each and every one of you and your devices, and your internet connections, so we can stay connected until we're out of here. And let us all pray that we would, exam first of all, examine our own hearts and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. Remember, Luke was written to the bride. Mark was written to the church. And Matthew was written to the Jews. John is considered the love gospel. It's Jesus loving on us and teaching us about love. So you can't pin all your thoughts, all your belief systems on the book of John. As one person put in the comments, how come Jesus didn't tell us in the book of John anything about obedience and submission to him? It just says to believe in him. See what people don't realize if they looked it up in the Greek. <coughs> it means more than to just believe. It means you believe to the point of obedience and committing to him. Because even the demons and Satan believe. And tremble at the very name of Jesus. I pray you all get that. I end this here. And I'll talk to you later.